I've been using and creating artwork and using postage stamps in them for at least the last 20 years, if not longer. Anyone who owns a piece of mine and has spent any time with it, it's almost like looking at an encyclopedia. Each piece is a history lesson, and then it also has its own secret history between the senders and the receivers. Hi, I'm Jordan Scott. I'm a mixed media artist and photographer from Chicago, Illinois. I started creating art as soon as I could hold a pencil or a crayon, I suppose. My father was a working artist, a sculptor, and a painter. So I was just sort of surrounded and immersed in it from a very early age. I started collecting stamps as a kid. They slowly started to work more and more into my mixed media pieces. I happened upon an estate sale at one point and procured what I thought was a small stamp collection. It turned out to be a massive one. And I slowly worked them more and more into my artwork. And then eventually the stamps took the pieces over completely. So my process starts with a sketch. From there, it goes to the actual process of choosing which stamps, and that had a lot to do with the color palette. Once the piece is done, then it goes to the resin phase, it kind of highlights and accentuates the colors and kind of blends it together. There has been times with commissions where specific stamps or specific colors of stamps are needed and I'll search them out. Generally speaking though, I work in reverse. I work with what I found in my quote unquote treasure hunt. So it's a little bit of a challenge in that sense, but I've always thrived as an artist with limitations. When I have these limitations, I tend to be able to be more creative in the smaller box of limitations. For my personality, that works for me. In the last two decades, to my knowledge, I have not used mint or new stamps in any of my pieces. They're exclusively used postage stamps from the turn of the century, 1910, 1920s, all the way to 1980s. And it's really important to me that the stamps have been used, are being repurposed, and more importantly, have that secret hidden history of having a sender and a receiver. And so that each piece has this mystical layer to it of all these little stories that we'll never know about. My pieces range in size from small eight inch by eight inch all the way up to 60 inches by 60 inches. So the time for that process varies greatly. Typical eight by eight I do in one sitting. There's probably about 150 postage stamps in there. Whereas something that's 60 inches by 60 inches takes me three and a half to four weeks to do, which can have anywhere between 5,000 and 8,000 postage stamps. Aside from the geometry of it and hopefully the beauty of the piece, there's also 5,000 hidden stories in the piece, and so that's really important to me. I have all of this chaos in front of me, and then slowly over weeks and weeks and weeks, it becomes controlled chaos, and then slowly becomes order, and then slowly becomes something beautiful and important, and that will live on and in a new state. When I'll see someone or a couple looking at a piece of mine from, let's say, 15, 20 feet away, they think it's a textile piece. And I love and never get bored of seeing someone get closer and closer to the piece, realizing it's actually made out of post stamps and watching their aha moment. I didn't plan this particular series of postage stamps. It just happened. It came from the heart. It came from something that interested me. So to get the kind of reaction that I'm getting is beyond my wildest imagination. As far as moving on, I just don't see it happening. If you visited my studio and saw my uh, inventory of postage stamps, you'd realize I have another couple decades to go just with what I have already.